Season 1 of Population 1 has finally arrived. Let's take a look. Welcome to the Mothership. <laughs> The first official season of Population 1 just dropped this past Thursday, and with it came a massive update, introducing new weapons and a ton of new features. This is without a doubt the hugest update this game has ever seen, so let's take a look at all the shiny new goodies. And we're gonna dive right into the three new weapons added to the game, the katana, the knife, and the LMG. I'm gonna start with the katana because it is probably my favorite new addition to the game and an absolute game changer in my opinion. It is an insanely effective melee weapon doing something like 75 damage per slash at close range, meaning it will absolutely eviscerate someone if you're able to get close enough to pull it off. But that's not my favorite thing about this new weapon. You see, if you put two hands on the katana, a shield pops out, blocking all enemy fire from your torso. And this has huge gameplay implications, because not only can you use this shield to get close to get a katana kill, but you can also use it to help avoid sniper fire while changing cover positions. It even shields your teammates, so get creative with this one. Shield your buddy while he takes out an opposing sniper. Population 1 has been getting absolutely littered with snipers lately, so this shield will help balance things out as long as you're using it effectively. You do run a little bit faster while you're holding the katana, but you run a little bit slower while the shield is out, so use that knowledge to your advantage. Next up, we have the all-new LMG, the M60. Though the M60 is an absolute beast of a weapon, it requires four motions to reload, begins its fire slowly, and ramps up to an extremely rapid rate of fire. It is extremely good at dealing large amounts of damage once it gets going. A little tip is try to start the fire early while you're going around a corner or if you know enemies are coming up. Get this thing started a second ahead of time so that by the time you interact with the enemy it's already going full stop. It's great at taking out multiple enemies in one rip. Also excellent at destroying barriers if you run into a builder. You do run a bit slower while you have the M60 out, so don't pull it out until you're ready to use it. And the last of the three weapons is the dagger. This is something that you spawn with, so you now have an unarmed melee weapon to use if you don't have a gun yet. Full disclosure, I haven't used this very much. I usually drop it as soon as I can to free up the inventory space. So if you've used the dagger, you've gotten into some knife fights, leave a comment and let me know how it is. Next up, we have a brand new throwable, the Zone Grenade. The Zone Grenade is a grenade that you throw just like a normal grenade, but when it blows up, it turns into a giant ball of zone. Meaning it will hurt the enemies inside of this ball as if they were outside of the zone, slowly chipping away at their health. This can be incredibly useful inside of buildings as it goes right through walls and will force enemies out through the windows if they're not able to sustain the health damage. An important thing to note about the zone grenade is that the zone will hurt you if you're the one that threw it, but the zone will not hurt your teammates, making this an incredibly important teamwork tool to assist your teammates in battle. The zone ball will appear red to anyone that it can damage, and it will appear blue if your teammate threw it and it will not damage you. The final item added to the game was the shield soda. Yes, that's right, everyone can finally rejoice as there is a way to carry shield around with you. Just like the regular soda, drinking a shield soda will slowly replenish your shield over time. I don't have to explain how useful this is as this is something the community has been asking for since day one. And this brings me right into the next big update change and that is that you can now stack items. That's right, you can now stack multiples of a soda, grenade, or banana 
in one inventory slot. You can stack five of each soda in a slot, two bananas to a slot, and two of the original frag grenades. This is a huge deal for inventory management. I know a lot of players were upset that one grenade took a whole inventory slot, and the same goes for a soda. So that means not only can you now carry shields with you, but you can carry a lot of shield with you. So that's all the items added to the game, but there are a couple other really big changes like the introduction of player titles, calling cards, and sprays. Before I go any further, I just want to say that most of the sprays, calling cards, and titles can only be unlocked by purchasing the Battle Pass for Season 1. The Battle Pass is only 5 bucks, and it'll allow you to unlock these cosmetic upgrades as you gain experience and progress through the season. It's important to note that for this $5, you will still have to earn these rewards by playing the game and getting experience. You can also pay a larger, exorbitant amount of money to get everything all at once, but I think that detracts away from the fun of the game. But hey, if you want to support the developers, go for it. Anyways, player titles are specific titles that you can unlock in the game. They will display below your name and other players can see them. A couple cool ones I've seen floating around are Juggernaut and Hivemind. But anyway, there'll be a bunch of these titles that you can customize your character with. Next up, we have the addition of calling cards. This is a really cool addition to the game. Basically, it's a card that will be displayed at the end of the game once someone is killed. This will show that player who killed them, their calling card graphic, along with their stats like number of kills and wins. Although this is a far cry from something like a kill cam, this is still a very welcome addition to the game and just a really cool way that you can additionally customize your character, showing other players something cool when you kill them. And last up we have the addition of sprays. Sprays are graffiti tags that you can place around the environment while you play. I don't really see too many players using these in the actual game, mostly just in pre-game lobbies, but they do look really neat and they definitely make the battlefield look really cool. Well, that's all I got for you guys today. Let me know what you think about this update in the comments. What's your favorite weapon? What's your favorite new addition to the game? If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at MothershipVR. Thanks for watching.